Hello. Today, I will be providing a brief 10-minute introduction to the total operating characteristic and how it can be used to evaluate land change modeling outputs, specifically within the Plum Island ecosystems, using the Idrisi Land Change Modeler. You should be familiar with Idrisi and its Land Change Modeler before watching this video. For more information, including some tutorials, go to the Clark Labs website listed on the last slide of this presentation. Today we are going to be examining some outputs of the land change modeler and how they can be assessed using the total operating characteristic. To provide some context, the Plum Island ecosystems are located in northeast Massachusetts. This is a good study area for land change modeling due to the fact that there has been a rapid rate of development within the last few decades. We will be using categorical land cover maps as well as several driver variables to model land change within the Plum Island ecosystems. This map represents one of three categorical land cover maps that we will be using for this demonstration. There are three categories of land cover, forest, built, and other. Our second map shows the same three categories, but for 1985. We'll use the period of 1971 to 1985 to calibrate our models. Finally, our third map shows land cover within the Plum Island ecosystem in 1999. We will create models that predict land cover in 1999 using the calibration interval maps as well as driver variables. For this exercise, we created two models to predict land cover in 1999, one using one driver variable, which is 1971 land use. The other model will add elevation, surficial geology, and distance from built in 1971. We will use these two models to illustrate how the soft output of our models can change and how we can evaluate those changes. The soft output is one of two outputs of the land change modeler. It represents an overall measure of vulnerability for each pixel to undergo some type of land cover transition. It would be beneficial to understand how this output can differ between models. This video will demonstrate one way of evaluating and comparing different soft outputs. This map represents the soft output of our first model using only 1971 land use. Redder values indicate higher projected potential for any transition to occur. And this map represents the soft output for our second model, where we added elevation, surficial geology, and distance from built in 1971. Again, values that are more red indicate higher projected potential for any transition to occur between land covers. This video specifically focuses on using the total operating characteristic to evaluate these soft outputs. It expands on the idea of the widely used relative operating characteristic, but makes some improvements to make it more intuitive. One of the most important improvements it makes is that it includes enough information such that the user can recreate a 2x2 two two presence and absence matrix, which we will explain now. The presence-absence matrix serves as the backbone of both the ROC and the TOC. The basic idea is that the same is that some input ma index map is compared with a Boolean map. Thresholds are created within the index map, and a presence-absence matrix is created at each threshold. The outcome of each matrix can be plotted graphically. It is important to note that each threshold can produce hits, misses, false alarms, and correct rejections. In our example, the index map for which the thresholds will be created is the soft output. The Boolean map will be a map showing change between 1985 and 1999, where a value of 1 will indicate change and a value of 0 will indicate no change or persistence. The number of hits plus misses provides the number of observations that a reference change or values of 1 in the Boolean map. The number of false alarms plus correct rejections provides the number of observations that a reference persistence or values of 0 in the Boolean map. In order to produce TOC graphs for our soft outputs, we can use the ROC model module in Idrisi. Here we specify the soft prediction map as the input image and the difference between 1985 and 1999 as the Boolean image, which is the reference. We will use a study area map as a mask as we want to ignore background values in the maps. We specify that we want a threshold width of 1, which indicates that thresholds will be created such that 1% of the study area will be captured at each threshold. In the end, we will be creating 
101 separate thresholds and resulting in 101 points on our TOC curves. We will save the tabular model module results to a text file. Open this text file in Excel using delimited formatting, specifying space as the delimiter. We will now use a TOC generator spreadsheet developed by Professor Gil Pontius entitled TOC Figure 1. Copy the entire spreadsheet that you just imported into Excel and paste the output into TOC Figure 1 spreadsheet under the TXT tab, specifying that you want to paste only values. In order to insert, ensure that your TOC figures are as intuitive as possible, insert the variable, variable name into cell D1 on the datasheet. Also insert the size of the reference change, or category 1 in the Boolean map, into cell A2 on the datasheet. If you would like to have data labels, then edit them on the datasheet in column B. However, you may need to install this Excel add-in. Finally, examine the TOC figure sheet. You might need to edit the upper bound of each axis. You should set the upper bound of the horizontal or x-axis to be the size of the study area. You should set the upper bound of the vertical or y-axis to be the size of the reference change which is in column N of the data sheet. You will notice that the TOC generator creates both an ROC and a TOC figure. I will show the ROC figures first and then compare them with the TOC figures. For those of you familiar with the ROC, you are probably also familiar with the area under the curve metric. This is a widely used metric used to evaluate model performance. The ROC also shows the uniform line, which represents the expected curve of an index variable that has its values assigned at random. Thus, the user can compare their index map to a randomly created one. We see that our index performs worse than random at predicting change, areas close to the origin, and better than random at predicting persistence, areas closer to the upper right corner of the chart. Now we can examine the TOC plot. You should notice that the axes have changed and some lines have been added. First of all, the axes are bounded differently. On the horizontal axis, we can see that the size of the study area, about 1,134 square kilometers. On the vertical axis, we see the size of the reference change, about 86 square kilometers. The area under the curve hasn't changed, and neither has the curve itself. The interpretation has become more intuitive, however, because the axis labels have no longer have ratios. Furthermore, two dashed lines, the maximum and minimum lines, outline the mathematically possible area that the TOC curve can appear in. Let's compare both the ROC and TOC for Model 1 with those for Model 2. This ROC figure shows that our area under the curve has increased, and our index is performing better than random at predicting change, areas closer to the origin, and persistence, closer to the point that are the top right corner of the chart. Now let's examine the TOC figure. Again, the curve and the area under the curve don't change, but it is now bounded by the mathematical possibility and shows both the size of the study area and the size of the reference change. These pieces of information will be necessary to recreate the presence-absence matrix discussed earlier. This, along with easier to interpret axes, make the total operating characteristic a more intuitive method of assessing soft outputs and potentially many other index maps. We would like to thank you for watching this video and hoped it was informative. Our thanks also go out to Professor Gil Pontius and the Quantitative Environmental Modeling class for their guidance. For more information on Adresi's land change modeler, visit clarklabs.org. For the TSC generator, visit P Professor Pontius's personal website. And for other comments or questions, feel free to email Matt Manley. Thank you.